how to add organic residue. And there are so many different ways. So let's start looking at them, which mulches, living mulches and cover crops. And I'm gonna say compost too, to use depends on our soil type, our nutrient level, our soil texture and pH, the precipitation levels, moisture is important, irrigation and temperature, just to name a few. Not only is it, it depends on climate and soil and temperature and moisture, but it, it, it depends on what you want to do, what your cropping system is, how fast you need the nutrients to get to the plant, and what kind of soil organic matter system you're developing. So the hugel culture out here with the high carbon, high woody material, high lignified material is very different than the soil organic matter system I have been showing you on all of my farms, but even on my farm in <laughs> Oregon, where I'm working towards a higher carbon soil organic matter system. Most of the commercial organic farmers I know would not be able to be patient enough to utilize a soil organic matter system the way this hugel culture is, is developing. They, they, they would need their profits faster. One thing I think we can say pretty much is a universal truth, and there aren't very many universal truths in ecology. But one thing I think we can say is that we want to add a diversity of organic residues regularly from that organic matter continuum that we talked about this morning. We want to add it regularly, not at all at once. And we talked about the difference between raw residues, decomposing residues like fresh grass clippings and legume clippings to more decomposed organic matter or organic residues, dried grass clippings, to decompose plant residues, to compost, to better decomposed compost, all the way down to humus. And then we discovered that humus isn't even a single entity, that it's made up of different components as well. So I would really like you, when you think about planning your soil organic matter systems, to think about including these different residues along the continuum. I think that's a valuable way to think. We're going to look at plant-based versus manures, high carbon versus high nitrogen, composted versus raw, and surface applied versus tilled in. What organic residues create active soil organic matter rapidly? In general, soil organic matter in manure amended soils seems to be the most active. It has the quicker plant nutrient release. However, soil organic matter in cover crop soil is often, and in this particular long-term study, was the most stable and higher in total carbon and nitrogen. It was slower to create soil active soil organic matter. So let's look at carbon to nitrogen ratio again in a more practical way. So the consideration for using cover crops, mulches and living mulches is that we wanna make sure that we understand the carbon to nitrogen ratio and related to the carbon to nitrogen ratio is the rate of decomposition. So higher carbon, higher lignin, lower nitrogen. We saw that there would be different pathways of decomposition and generally higher carbon, higher lignin, slower decomposition, generally. All right, so on the left, we have TEF. It's an annual grass, cover crop, mode and surface applied. How's that for carbon to nitrogen ratio? High nitrogen or higher carbon? Higher carbon. Generally green and succulent and, and high nitrogen is faster to decompose. Generally brown and dry and low nitrogen slower. We also, when we think about something with a root, which would be a living mulch or a cover crop, not necessarily a mulch, 
we want to think about diversifying the root architecture. So maybe you mix in your cover crop species with taprooted plants like alfalfa that help create those vertical pores so we can have movement along the soil profile. We also want to have finely branched roots, for example, grasses that will enhance soil particle formation or soil aggregation. Mycorrhizae and some other microbes associated with living mulch roots and cover crop roots can temporarily absorb residual nitrogen and phosphorus and temporarily tie it up in the biomass of that, that microorganism. Nitrogen fixation in legume root nodules is an expensive to the plant process and takes some of the carbon so that we want to consider that when we think about how we're going to get nutrients into the soil. Perennial legumes, 70 to 80% of the plant's nitrogen content is in the top growth, not in the root. Where is the carbon? Most of the carbon's in the root, but the nitrogen is in the top growth. And that makes sense when we think about carbon to nitrogen ratios and the, the simple recipe of brown and dry, higher carbon, green and succulent, higher nitrogen. But we wanna think about that when we're thinking about how we get the nitrogen to our microbial community, right?